Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Jackson County Board of Supervisors meeting for Tuesday, July 2nd. We hope everyone is uh, enjoying their Independence Week, we want to call it, and uh, I hope you got some family and friends and enjoy everything, and the weather's been really nice. We get a little rain today, but um, sounds good for the weekend. So with me today, I have Don Schwanker, of an Enflego, myself, Mike Steinis, are your county supervisors. We have Shelly as the sitting in for the assistant auditor today. And Bjorn is IT director, Luann, our executive assistants in the background, and Mary is here from the newspaper. First on our agenda today is Mr. Todd Keeney, our Jackson County engineer. Good morning, Todd. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, normally, you know, Jaden has been doing this to kind of get the, the feel for that, but uh, he is uh, at a staff meeting with the uh, shop foreman and the book foreman, so he's Take upon itself to schedule weekly meetings to go over equipment repairs, projects, that kind of thing. So, sounds like a good idea. idea. We shouldn't do them on Tuesdays, I think. Personally, yeah. Exactly. Well, normally, normally it's Mondays, <laughs> but uh, I believe Sean was off yesterday, so he did it today. So, yeah, normally they don't do them on Tuesdays. So, anyway, um, well, I have one item on the agenda. It's a entrance permit approval. This is an existing entrance that they're asking the 911 address for. So. Side distance and everything's okay. Side distance is short on the the approach from the north, so it'll have a hidden. So it's four hundred feet, so it's not too bad, but it'll have a hidden hidden driveway. Does so it already have one if it's an existing? I don't think it does. I think I think it will will put in because it would have been installed prior to maybe that requirement. Okay. So now it will when it comes up to this permit, it'll be upgraded to what the current standard are. So. So it was not an entrance permit before. It was a field, or was it? It was an entrance before, but uh, now regulations. they want a nine hundred one address. So when we when they request that, we go through the entrance permit process. Yeah. Okay. So moved. Second. Motion and a second to approve the entrance permit for Dale Ports and Van Buren Township as presented. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carried. Uh, so just real quick uh, on the West Texas one, the paving job, the asphalt inner layer is done. Um, they're moving out to uh, Clinton County. has got a job uh, north of Elwood that they're the same thing. They're going to be doing inner layer on when they're done with that. It shouldn't only take, both of they said they can get done in a day. Then they're going to come back and uh, start doing the surface or the base mix on the. So are the lanes still uneven then right now? No, they should be back they to be back yeah. level. Okay. Yeah. So and they did that's, those. That's actually a pretty good drop if they're not waiting or then expecting that. That you know, <laughs> yeah, you got to so pay good. attention. Stay in your lane. Well, you know, it, it, it happens if you get off well, of it. Stay in your, your lane. Back on it is, you know. Yeah. So it, so the, the go in and do what they call strength and leveling course uh, to level up and then get the 2% crown because you don't want to adjust the crown with the inner layer because it's about one and a half times more expensive per ton. So if you're going to adjust crown cross slope, you want to do that with regular uh, strength and leveling mix, which is much less expensive than the inner layer. Because the inner layers, it's got like 9% uh, AC content when normally it's like 6% and the stuff is heavily polymerized. So it's a very expensive binder, basically. So the inner layer, is that to, to minimize the cracking and such? So it's a, it's a, it's a stress uh, crack mitigation layer is basically what it comes yeah. down to. Yeah. And I thought one of under whatever we call it, the red red bridge or red, red school on the red school off road. I thought that we had a lot of cracking in that after we that was when this inner layer was I thought fairly new if I remember right. But yeah, they've right. made some adjustments to there's what they call the massacre test. They've increased the amount of recovery that are supposed to be accumulated in that test. So I think it was originally it was like in the 80s. Now the requirement, I believe, is up over 90% recovery, which you know, in a nutshell, basically means it's more durable to resist cracking. Basically, it's hard, it's hard to describe. It's a it's a dense but flexible mix. Like you could take a bucket and dump it on the ground, and it will literally spread out on the ground overnight. That's that's how I guess. <laughs> flexible it is but it's very dense it's very low void so no i hope it's a good product yeah i mean it really really makes the nice road that's for sure so the only other thing we got a competent person training for the the two new guys that have kind of been switched around through the the bidding process so other than that i've heard good things about them 
We're on the street, but that's word on the street. I guess I ain't working with them. <laughs> that's weird you would hear word on the street. Though. Well, I just want to give a shout out to uh, I think Randy was the guy that came in from Secondary Roads to put up the signs and stuff. With Bomber, for the Randy this says, weekend. Yeah. yeah, um, he uh was out there bright and early. Um, not only did he help get the signage out and put up, he put out. We just asked for Hirschville Road. He put some signs out over by Rock uh, Iron Bridge coming in. He put snow signs there. He also sat over there and kind of helped control traffic a little bit or whatever, just with his truck and his lights and stuff like that. He kind of went over and above and he helped us picking up some of the big signs and stuff. So he was a huge asset. And I just want to give a shout out because it was very much appreciated and he it, he worked very well. I mean, I couldn't be, I can't say enough about what he did. So yeah, he's a, and he's very safety minded. Like he's on our safety committee and he's like, he's, he's a very, big proponent of the safety too. So yeah, because like I say the request was just for Hurstville Road from Rockdale up to the lime kilns. And he goes, Yeah, and I put signs over on Ironbridge coming down the hill too, some slow signs down. to let to let people know. And I was just like, and awesome. And then when I got over there, I saw and he had flashers on the top. And I was like, wow, this is awesome. We put our signs up and then he's like, because we had some big four foot bikes ahead kind of signs. And he goes, if you want, I'll just pick those up when I go through and you can just come get them from the shop whenever you want. Well, thanks. That's that, that was, a, he was a godsend. It, he worked very well. So I'll let him on that, um, it was very much appreciated and noted what he was yep. doing. It was a good event, I think for county and city. Yeah. 114 participants. Yep. Mm -hmm. right? from, I think it was five states. Seven, I think the paper seven, read. Seven, seven states. No. And uh, Deputy Crocker showed up. At first, we didn't think the sheriff's office said they weren't going to have people, but Crocker was there. And when we were putting signs out, he was following behind with the lights on on Iron Bridge to kind of slow people down because there's no shoulder. Then he did a lot of traffic control on 62, and he parked on Iron Bridge when a lot of the canoers were getting out. He had his lights on. So it was a very, I mean, there was a lot of people going above and beyond, and that was an unexpected bonus that really slowed because the pedestrians that were watching on Iron Bridge as people came around um, was an unexpected thing. And they parked on the east side of Iron Bridge going up where there is a shoulder. And they were walking across and they have Crocker and, and Randy there kind of helping slow traffic. And the traffic going through that day, that morning while we were there was like 20 miles an hour. It was very controlled. And one of the big benefits we heard from the race was the fact that it was so spectator friendly. So people could watch at Iron Bridge and watch at Bridgeport and watch at a lot of different spots. It, it went very well. And a lot of it's because of these people that kind of did extra that we didn't plan for. So let's just pass it along. All right. Thank you. That's yep. all. I have. All right. Thanks, Todd. Have a good uh, holiday. Yep, what's, you too. what's your actual name, Randy? What? What? Tyson. What's your name? Tyson. 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 And he is called Bomber. Don't. Yeah. yeah he is Bomber. Don't be blowing his head up too big in the paper then. <laughs> <laughs> no, we appreciate all the help that we've had to open out. So, all right. Are there any, any visitors or citizens that would like to approach the board this morning? Being or hearing none, I believe we have Rachel Anderson, uh, district rep from uh, for Congresswoman Mariette Miller Meeks. Is that correct? Yes. Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you all? Good. Well, I just wanted to stop in. I, it's been a while. You try to get through your, you have your list of people and then you realize you're miss some or you just time time gets away from you so I just wanted to stop in and say hi again and reintroduce myself I know it's been a while um and what our office kind of offers the congresswoman talks a lot about how trying to make partnerships with the different you know we all have our different roles with levels of government and making sure that we're a resource to you all on the federal level so if you have constituents of your own reaching out saying they're having issues with any federal agencies, IRS, Social Security, passports, uh, Medicare, Medicaid, things like that. Please send them our way. We're more than happy to help them um, kind of work through the process. Typically what happens is we take a privacy release form. It's just a basic form that gives us permission to contact the agency on someone's behalf. Uh, additionally, if you all are looking for letters of support for federal projects, for grants, um, we're more than happy to offer those. Generally speaking, um, we got to review it, but federal projects, uh, generally we are able to offer those letters of support. 
incredible project usually come with some red tape attached to it. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> that is true. But you found that out. <laughs> yeah, so things like um, I know the fire departments can typically typically go for a safer grant or something like that. So we've offered letters of support for safer grants in the past. Um, the Bridge Infrastructure Improvement Act, people have reached out in the past. Bridge infrastructure. So now it's looking really hard for a ramp to be put in for canoe access or boat access down at Iron Bridge. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, we just talked about it. We had the adventure race here in Makoga over the weekend, and it was a oh, seven-mile canoe and 10-mile bike or something. Know, it was an 11 and a half. Mile. Okay, well. 11 and a half-mile canoe, 12 oh, okay. bike ride, three and a half, or three-mile jog and back into town. Kind of a pseudo Ironman kind of thing. Okay. And we are currently going to try to redo that bridge next year, and we'd like to upgrade the a canoe. There is a canoe access there. We'd like to upgrade it a little bit to kind of further encourage tourism mm -hmm. and, and growth in that aspect because it's a beautiful asset that we should be taking advantage of. Is it on the river? Yeah, the Mokogata River. Yeah. Okay. So we're very fortunate to have the Mississippi and the Mokogata, but it only comes with a price tag when you, got, <laughs> when you put a bridge across that. You got five bridges going across that Mokogata River. It comes pretty pricey for a little town or a little county of Jackson. Mm -hmm. You know, that's uh, there's, it's expensive. Right. No, it's we're really trying to take advantage of you know the assets that we provide in tourism, getting people mm -hmm. out into the nature. And again, it was we hadn't done it in a couple of years because of COVID and post COVID kind of things. So first year we did it, we drew from seventy states. There's 114 participants, and uh, it was overwhelmingly lauded in the wildlife they saw, the scenery, the the ease, the spectator accessibility. It just went. Very, very well. It starts in Makoka, to ends in Makoka. It's just a great way to kind of, you know, showcase our area. And we'd like to see what's out there to kind of make it easier and more conducive as it grows. Because I think we had about a 90% discussion rate on uh, they're all coming back and they're telling people. So I would imagine that it's going to grow. That's so, great. How many years have you been doing it? Uh, this was our 21st year, okay. but we had to take two we years off because of COVID. COVID. But this was the first year of the new route, just because we had some safety concerns over the old route crossing 61 okay. and all that. And four lanes and bicycles are just not the not the not the greatest of uh, uh, partners. So the new race so far seemed to go very well. It was very well received, and we're just accessibility. Um, present some challenges and stuff, but it is called an adventure race, so that's part of the part adventure. Of the adventure. <laughs> but, uh, if it was easy, everybody would do it. Don't? That's right. <laughs> that's great. Jackson County is a beautiful county. I love coming up here and driving around. It's really beautiful. So that's exciting that you can bring people in through the race and have people word of mouth and keep increasing participation year after year. I did listen in on her town hall meeting last week. Yes, we had a tele town hall last week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we appreciate you coming up and uh, and and uh, sitting with us for a bit. I may know it's a short period, I know, but uh, at least you have the initiative to come up and meet us anyway. And if you got a couple cards, maybe leave them with Luann or yes, something. Yes, like I can do that. Yeah. 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 yeah, just but thank you for having me again. Really want to stress that if you ever need anything, please reach out. Uh, if we can't, can she do anything about her? From the federal side down, maybe for the jail being able to stay on. Well, Medicare. we've talked about that for legislation. You know, uh, there's a couple of things that we don't like about it. I mean, the the medication part of it, so that when when they're incarcerated, then they're off of their Medicare, and we got a you know now we got a toothache, now we got a uh, we got a heart attack. Oh, I got cancer now, so now we got to pay for all this. Okay, does that make any sense? Because they, they broke the they law had, when they had. <laughs> Medicaid or Medicare or whatever before, and then they get so they get incarcerated. Then then we're on the hook for all the they get disenrolled. For it. They, they get disenrolled. Okay, they get and, disenrolled then you, and then you have the whole issue of two them trying to get back on it once they do get released. Okay, that creates a it's very it's year. best for a small county, like I said. It, it one 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 disaster, well, one incident. Side of Senate Juvenile was sixty five thousand dollars. Yeah, one incident can break the bank here. You know, I'm just saying. Okay. Yeah. And we also have an issue with um, um, personnel with the, with the jail side of it. So a a female can watch a male, but can a male watch can't a male watch a female on right? on duty, but uh, but the male can't watch female. Now we're all equal nowadays, correct? 
So it makes an issue of uh, it makes an issue of hiring a lot easier if if we can. Okay. Uh, there's nothing really. I mean, with the camera system from that, I. I so with housing it. females, we always will have to have a female officer on duty. Always. And the staffing, I mean. Yeah, it's a staffing issue. Staffing issue and right. Is staffing difficult in general? As yes. well, aside from that. Yes. Mm -hmm. No, well, so then the added, rest added, of the world that yes. way, mm -hmm. and then to have to segregate staffing that we got to make sure every shift we have at least one female. Mm -hmm. That makes it tough because, again, it, not saying it's not a female role, but well, they say but a female, female can watch role. a female can watch a male shower, but a male can't watch a female shower, mm -hmm. and that's it, it. Just it's weird. Okay, you shouldn't either can go both ways or you can't. Going either way, you know what I mean, right? So it's confusing, but and then you know, again, it's just a it's a funding thing, staffing and funding issues. So I'm trying to unfunded make it work, unfunded yeah. management. We're trying to. That is something we are constantly looking at to make sure that mandates that come through are funded and trying to. To make that because we know it's a burden on you. You get right, these dictates from a higher level of government, and mm -hmm. how do you provide that service? Right. If you if when I mean, and if you look at it, it's as already a, a small tax base as a business. I mean, a lot of you know you'd like to offer these things, but you got to look at the business side of it. Of, mm -hmm. It's not feasible, right? But then when you're told you have to, all right, it's not feasible, but suck it up. <laughs> Appreciate it. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Yeah, hope the rain steers a little bit. And yeah, no. Yeah. It's it's a little little rain won't hurt. We can't complain about that. What we prayed for last year. I know, I know. We go back and forth. I said it can let up for a week or so. You have a good holiday weekend, also. Yes, week. you too. All right, uh, Shelly. Okay, my first item is uh, the minutes from the June twenty fifth, twenty twenty four board board. Proceedings. Make, make a motion to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the minutes of the Jan June 25th, 2024 board proceeding as written by Arthur Smith and authorized in publication in the official newspaper. All those in favor say aye. Uh, aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. The next thing I have is the county recorder's report of fees collected for June. And she collected a total of $34,287.89. So moved. Second. I have a motion and second to approve the and authorize the chair signature on the county recorder's report of fees collected for the month of June. All those in favor say aye. Aye. aye opposed? Motion carried. And then the last thing that I have is the certificates of substantial completion for the uh, uh, together we build building. Can we hold off on that until after John is here? Sure. And are you going to do the claims? Oh. <laughs> well, she wouldn't have it in the minute. <laughs> it's on my minute. It's on my minute. Well, it's on this one. But Don't you hand it out, sir. That's on the screen. Um, I have claims for. Uh, four hundred thirty-three thousand seven hundred eighty-five dollars and fifty-five cents. Yes, I'll make a motion to approve that. I'll second that. I have a motion and a second to approve the claims and warrant issues as pre presented. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. All right. Thank you. We will wait to discuss uh, with John uh, Luann. Okay. Let me text John saying we're running fast. If you want. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, calendar for this week. Um, ten thirty this morning, of course, is the Innovate One Twenties UX Design Summer Intern Class Presentation across the street, Innovate One Twenty. For any of you that want to go. Um, tomorrow, Wednesday, July 3rd at 9 a.m. is an RTA meeting interview for by Zoom for all of you. Uh, at 4:30 is tentatively a uh, Wednesday's a possible meeting um, for any of you that want to go to that. 
Also tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock tentatively is the Mississippi Valley CEO meeting by Zoom for Don. I don't think that's been confirmed quite yet. Yeah. There is a Wednesday possible on the, on the third? What'd you say? It's a tentative. Is oh. a T in front because he hasn't confirmed it, so maybe they're not doing it this week. I haven't heard. Okay. Thursday, July the fourth, the entire courthouse will be closed for the Independence Day holiday. Monday, July eighth at seven thirty a.m. is tentatively an early childhood Iowa executive committee meeting by Zoom for NIN. And at three o'clock on Monday, uh, there's tentatively a governing board meet, special meeting. Um, in Davenport, also for NIN. The next regular meeting will be Tuesday, July 9th at 9 a.m. And that afternoon at 4 o'clock, there's tentatively a Makoka to River Watershed Management Authority Executive Meeting um, in Monticello by Zoom for Don. All right, there's so many tentative things on there. Everybody's scrambling for the week, I think. Um, on my agenda this morning, I have two um, applications for fireworks permits. The first one is for Ernest Schultz for the Great River Threshers at 99 Centennial Street in Miles on the 12th of July. Second, sorry. I have a motion and second to approve the uh, Great River Threshers and Ernest Schultz, the Fireworks permit as presented. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. I also have an application for a fireworks permit for Brant Moore at 39950 195th Street in Bellevue, also on July 12th. Motion to approve. Second. A motion and second to approve the fireworks permit for Brant Moore as presented. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign. Motion carried. That's all I have for you. Um, again, just so everybody was aware, you got the emails last Friday. We was approached by a, some individual in Leisure Lake and had some questions about uh, their display that they set off. And they, um, I should say, the professional was supposed to get the permit, and he lapsed a little bit in this. So we uh, got the insurance verification and all that going. So should be on the up and up. They do it every year and. But there were some citizens that were concerned about insurance and liability. So we got that taken care of last week. And I sent out the notifications. They just let them know yep. there wasn't a permit in place for it. Yep. So thank you. Have a good holiday. You. Um, any other boards or commission reports that we need at this time or want to elaborate on? Um, I did sit in on the destination Iowa. Meeting yesterday, Monday, yep. Yeah. And the biggest thing on that was he kind of came back with what the WHKS's bid would be to kind of start the process over on that, which is just under 70,000 for them to do the engineering work. Um, Obviously, that's higher than what they were predicting before of around 10000 So, So, as I understand it, the funding for that will actually come out of the grant? Yes, funds. but it could mean that something else gets... So, it might have to be... Something else might have to be eliminated or changed. Right. And they're putting it kind of out for bids in different... Phases. Kind of phases. So, that way, they do have everything in there that if more grant money becomes available, they have all the steps ready. They just gotta move forward with applying for the grant. So like they do all kind of a rock walk over for now until they can get the second bridge funded or something. But again, they're putting it out that maybe the bids will come in under what they're thinking and maybe they can do the whole thing at one time here or it may be done. So they're still moving forward with it. So they're still moving forward but asking that when bids come in that they break it up into these sections. And just as WACKS can get all this done on the time frame required or? They're sure hoping. They seem to think they can. Okay. So 
That's the information that would relate to me, yeah. And the uh, disc golf is course. definitely driving forward and sounds like the guy from WHKS is that's in charge of that section is a huge disc golf, disc golf person. <laughs> Uh, so my understanding of what I I got out of the one meeting we had. So I know it's a big thing. Yeah. And then with uh Iris, the talk is of course depending on weather, end of July ish, they should be kind of done up there in first creek. First creek. So I did take a drive through there. Um, you know, I mean, some of the what residents the last year had some concerns about that new blacktop street. You know, they were going to cut that out and put the line in. They didn't cut it out. They took it all out. So they're going to get a brand new street the way it looks to me. <laughs> I was going to say there's a lot of stuff. But... <laughs> they took the whole street out. They, they, yeah. So it looks like they're going to get a whole new street. Yeah, yeah. And some of the holdup will be depending on the river to get. Sure, down in the park. Well, they the did park have the park. connected. I thought they had that down in there already. It's not connected. Okay. The yeah, it's underwater right and now. all that are set there, but they're not connected to the system. So. Yeah. What if it's still down the railroad up there? Um, you know, I seen a train on that sidetrack yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> they, yeah. were, they were coming south. They said that's quite a process. They put all their tracks in, and then they... It's lower, you know, yeah. much lower. Yeah. Well, they put all this rock on top of it, all this flint rock, and they come in there with this machine and woo, 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 jack, them up. jack that whole track. Move ahead, jack I that whole track. When we were there for, uh, that <laughs> meeting or whatever, I was like, this is significant. No, that yeah. crossing is about level now. Yeah, yeah they're about level. That's... But they left the whole track. They said the equipment, the, my brother lives up there. And he it's said weird. The I think they, they just get it up to that height. To begin you with. think it would shake the like, all the cabins there, stuff off the shelves? Or oh, yeah, I don't know. He said they come in and they shake that thing, rattles, and they're tra raises the track up, and the rocks fall in underneath it. <laughs> <That's amazing. laughs> so, anyway, there's progress there, good That's or bad. That's all I had. I didn't have anything. I do not. We'll take a short recess at this time. We will reconvene at this time, and we're joined by Mr. John Hansen, our construction manager for a couple of projects we got going on here. Good morning, John. Good morning. Good morning, morning. John. Yeah, it's a little bit wet out again, of course. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Good thing you got a roof over your head over there. Yeah. Well, it's a lot nicer here than when I was up north the other day. So, <laughs> but uh, I was going to start with the Jackson County Fair. So basically, they have. Everything done, I've been on the contractor to switch out some locks from one door to the other. They have the hardware and the locks in the wrong place for the key. And uh, we did some caulking on those back doors. And uh, they're, they're supposed to install some sweeps. Some sweeps are extended all the way to the jam. And that's why we were getting a little bit of leaking in there, I believe. They put, uh, there are rain guards and stuff back there, and it's difficult to keep them uh, steel doors from leaking, but uh, we're working towards that goal. Uh, I know that they kind of, they asked uh, Stickley Electric to provide some additional outlets at the counter and such. And uh, Stickley's supposed to be there that this week to take care of that. That's an extra that they put on. Uh, and Stickley's working on the lights. Uh, as far as the front entrance doors, uh, they the guys came and they extended the sweeps on the front doors. And they also installed some rain guards over top of the aluminum store front doors. Try to keep that, you know, keep the water out from leaking in those particular areas. Also, uh, they're supposed to be sending me another rain guard for the west door, and then we'll get that installed for you. And they should take care of a lot of that. I submitted all the final documents to Lisa. Uh, they included, and there's a substantial completion form that we need to get signed. 
uh, but I'd like to explain what that's about. So the one document that uh, the that signed is a con called a D707 consent of surety to final payment. That means the bonding company uh, sends an affidavit that they're gonna back the project for another year during the warranty period. And the bonding company will uh, investigate it that uh, they'll maintain any costs and stuff regarding that. The other uh, is a G706A, which is the contractor's affidavit, the release of liens, meaning that they've been paid and, and they're releasing all lien rights. And the G706 is a contractor's affidavit to payment of debts and claims that they're signing an affidavit that they paid all, all their suppliers and such. The substantial completion form uh, is a document which sets the, when you occupied the facility. And that's when we had uh, occupancy from the fire marshal and we actually used the facility prior to that even, but that, that establishes your one-year warning period, which is set for February 4th of 2024. So February yeah. of 25? Of 24 is when it started. Oh, when it started? Yeah. So it's good until February 25? That's correct. Which is only six months from now. Mm -hmm. Okay. I guess... Um, yeah, when I hear something to the effect that it's hard to keep steel doors from leaking, I this, this ain't nothing new here. Steel doors. I, I don't know why steel doors should leak, but I mean they gotta make them so they don't leak the doors. Well, well, that's the thing that makes me nervous. It's like, okay, we can try these or we do these things, and we don't get any rain no more. We're not gonna know by February twenty five if they're. You don't think you're going to get any rain by February 25? We may not. Uh, if it stops here. It's raining right now. Yeah, they, the the things they, ain't done. Are they leaking? Well, you're under warning. Uh, you know, what type of door you want to put in. And back to front doors, we're supposed to put a canopy over. For one thing. If you get a driving rain, you can get some moisture in there. I mean... The only thing you can do is tighten up some weather seals. It's not the door that's bad. It's just that mm -hmm. that's the nature of the beast. I mean, uh, we're going to get them sealed. I mean, we're going to push to get them sealed. No, well, I, again, I guess I suspect that you look things over. and uh, you know. Yeah, I mean, I, I've taken pictures. I've written emails to them. So it's just a matter of getting the wet, correct weather stripping on and... Uh, Getting the correct. Uh, so has uh, the committee or together we build? Have they done their walkthrough and approved? Well, they did that long. Ago. Okay. Yeah. We did punch list a long time okay. ago. They occupied the facility even yeah. before February for Ford, but and so it's been under warning this whole time. So we're just pushing get. Minor things out of the way. Uh, I think we get the door sealed back there because I could see light through them under the sweep. They just made the sweep as wide as the door and get your margins on both sides. Sure. And then so they need to extend that sweep out to the jams yeah. and cut the metal to the door, you know, so it closes properly. But uh, so I got them working on that. And Billy. Is it Squire uh, Kirk? Kirk, you know, should be taking care of that. So, and then Jeremy and I went in, and it looked like there was a where the stop is on the jam. It looked like there that there was a spot that could possibly leak. So we went ahead and caught that and stuff. And I'll go over there today and take a look to make sure. Yeah, we're not getting any rain. Well, I guess you know. I guess we're just making sure that it uh, that it's. I, I think I, it's I understand. Productive. I don't want it leaking. Yeah, either. yeah. We don't want it in a year and a half to be. Yeah, I understand that completely. Changing everything out again. Oh yeah. Well, did, did we? You, 
there's no other door to put in. I mean, it's not the door itself. Right. It's a weather stripping around the door that's leaking. And at some point, you know, they may put in, you know, small canopy or something over it. But uh, the west door that had them plunger things did that. That got repaired too. Got changed yeah. or repaired or yeah, they were there, and uh, it was before uh, when we had the big opening over there. Uh -huh. They were there that day, and I followed them around the entire day. They showed me what they had, uh, and uh, they went and repaired that, and then they added the new sweeps, the rain guards, everything else that we needed. Uh, on the door, so yes, they have been repaired. I followed up on that, and I wanted to stay there with them because I wanted to see who I was working with and stuff. I yeah. Mean, I, so I guess I, I, I mean, you understand that we're holding you accountable for this all be being being done. You know, I mean, it's got to be done too. Well, I represent you, right. so you're right. hold, you're holding them accountable. I need but aiding in that process. I'm not the general contractor on your rep, so yeah, and I'm not an inspector, so I'm not going to go over. Yeah, yeah, I know you're welcome to. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Only thing, other thing I can think of over there is they said that the, the floor in the kitchen was, you know, a little bit rough, meaning that it's got to be textured so that people don't slip and fall, but. Uh, so I'm just working with my match. Other than that. Okay. Uh, so uh, any other questions or concerns? Shelly, is this the time that you want to uh, approve this then or? Yes. I need, uh, approval and authorization for the chair to sign the certificates of substantial completion. I'll make that motion. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve and have the chair signature on the certificates of substantial completion from Peak Construction, Hometown Mechanical, Property Heating and Cooling, Midwest Automatic Fire Sprinkler Company, Stickley Electric, um, for the Jackson County Fair Extension Building as presented. All those in favor say aye. 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 aye opposed? Motion carried. Okay. If you're short on time, you can nope. just sign them anytime. Talk about the gym. No, I meant you can sign them anytime. Okay. Uh, and you have two, them, Shelly? There's two right. copies of each of them. Sign and I'll yep, send we'll do it. Copy back. So, uh, as far as jail goes, uh, sheriff was over there. I did, uh, Jim Cracker was over there and asked if they could move some furniture in. I called the fire marshal and I got approval to move furniture in. Uh, so you know, that that was a couple weeks ago. Fire uh, alarm company was in the other day, so they're getting they had uh, getting their programming and stuff done. Uh, <laughs> the architect and engineers were on site last. I don't know what it is anymore. Last week, though, you say I believe, and we did the punch list. Uh, the architect and engineers did an on hold facility, and. Uh, uh, architect and myself, we did the punch list on the administrative section, and that. Well, the architect was here. Oh yeah, yeah, Rick was here. Okay, and both engineers, Dave and Dennis, were also here. So I got the punch list emailed out to everybody for those particular items. Uh, I gave them two weeks to clean that up, and I'm working on the punch list for the correctional area. Uh, they finished the vehicle, Sally, Ford floor and everything, so everything is ready to go. Security Electronics needs to get in there. I've been calling them next week. Uh, they're going to get in there and uh, finish up their stuff. Uh, so I talked to the sheriff yesterday and said, you know, we probably ought to be planning on getting something set up for an open house. I mm -hmm. believe you're going to want an open house. And he said he's going to be busy July 20th, the week of the 23rd, I believe. Uh, then the fair start. Yep. July 23rd or something like that. So I said, well, then you need to set it up, you know, 
either for the first week in August, you know, I don't know if you guys want to do it on a Friday or a Saturday. I mean, I think you're going to oh, have... Oh, I know, a... sir. What do you think, Brent? I mean, I think we should almost have two. Two yeah. that days? I mean, yeah. I would say at least if we're going to do one day, it would have to be a Saturday when most people are off work and have more time to... To come over and take a look at it, you a do it there to work. Works out. Yeah. I, I don't know. We can do it. We can I mean, do it. If it's busy on the, the third, then we do it on the tenth. But I, I think you're going to have you. You probably have 800 people. You know, anyways, I got to believe. So I mean, the sheriff, the staff, are going to have to have people there. You know, to lead people. You know, groups right, through right, it. Right. It it gets pretty active. So. I guess my only comment is just tell me when you want to, you know, when we want to have it. If we want to go the week of the 10th, you know, since you got that week of the 23rd or whatever, just let me know. And what do you think in 9th, 10th, 11th, something like that? Doing talking August or yeah, yeah I mean, yeah, if we're after the fair is the 23rd, you too much into August, you're going to have people competing with state fair and all that kind of stuff, and schools getting ready. To yeah, go. but we can't. I mean, unless you can do it on the first, second, third, or the second, third, and fourth, you know. I, when are you going to have the contractors mostly out of there? I, I I need them out of there by the week of the 22nd or 29th or at the latest. So there we want to make sure that these contractors are around here for our uh, maintenance people here to show them what they need to know about this equipment, you know, whether it be well, any training yesterday. So I'm the engine generator. So yeah, and he said I talked to him this morning in the hallway. He said he had training on that, but again, oh, they gotta have training and cooling and all the other stuff and whatever's over there. Yeah. Air air suction, ventilators, whatever they are. Yeah. I, 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 I would like him to do training style. with the sheriff and staff on uh you know on the twenty the week of the 29th. They have to give them four or five days training on operating the doors, operating the equipment, and everything else up the control panels. So after the week of the 23rd, I'd like to do training that following week, which is the week of the 29th. And uh, so if you wanted to do it on the 10th, I don't know if I'd do it two days. Are we talking about the training for maintenance or are we talking about the public training training? for everybody? Yeah. Control panels for the sheriff, the maintenance training that will be accomplished too during the course of it. I'll just uh, coordinate that with the Jeff and them and mm -hmm. sheriff. So, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, HVAC we have to train on. Yeah, you know, several things. Uh, so we we did kind of discuss that. Okay, so when the fair is going on, there'd be a lot of people in town already. That would have been kind of a maybe an ideal time to do the tours for the public. But I guess I was a little concerned that maybe we weren't going to quite be ready yet. Um, and that is a very busy week for us. I mean, some of us end up working kind of double shifts just to cover the day shift and then go down to the fair afterwards and cover that too. Um, maybe just some, uh, not so much for the jail so much, but for patrol, we're definitely very strapped that week. Yeah. And I just was a little concerned that maybe we wouldn't be ready yet. So I thought, mm, I don't know if we can squeeze that in that week or not. I, I, I honestly, I think it's a little too much, and I'm not to say that people are in on town, but if they want to come tour it, they will come and tour it. Yeah. yeah. You know, whenever we set the date, and if they're not interested, that's not my problem. But yeah, right. you know, I, you know, I, and I maybe we could put some signage up at the fair that could. jail tour would be then. That's well, a good way. You know, there's a lot of people out and about. So if you're training the week of the 29th, that is the second and third weeks. So by the end of that week, I mean, that weekend, does it make sense? Or do you want to wait till the 10th? I, I think I'd just go to the 9th, 10th, let the sheriff get settled in. Yeah, I makes mean, sense. They're, they're going to start, I believe you're going to start moving furniture, I uh, believe either the 10th or the 17th of this month, start moving furniture in. I well, like when that. did we get the occupancy rating? So I didn't think you could move in until you got yeah, fire okay. marshal. Will that so. all be done? This one, I have to do. Yeah, well, yeah. I gotta get out of here, and uh, you gotta get in. We ain't letting you go anywhere till we're good and we're happy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm gonna go on the record right now. Uh, but do you have them scheduled to come in sometime, or is that still? I talked to Trevor Kabbalah, who's fire marshal. Yeah, and uh, he is scheduled. I gotta get Delbert scheduled to come in here, but. I want to schedule them ahead of time. So I'm going to schedule them here this week or whatever. Okay. 
but it's got to be done. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's got. We got. I haven't it. been. It's I thought there, they right? could move anything in until they ever the building, the fire marshal and everything gave me all clear. They can't move people, people. In, but. They're trying to tell me I couldn't move furniture in that. Yeah, well, that's right. what that's they said. Put them together, we built that yeah. they couldn't move in until after that was done. Yeah. So, well, I talked to the fire marshal while Jim was standing there with me. And he said, Yeah, as long as you're not going to have 20 people in there setting up stuff on a consistent basis, then you can move furniture in. I, I, it's Pretty not a code right. that you can't move furniture in, or else I wouldn't be able to move a yeah. hot water heater in or anything else in there. So uh, he he gives permission to go ahead and move furniture. In. We just can't occupy the system. Okay. So, and we'll, we'll have uh, fire sprinkler and fire alarm certification. You know, we got to have it within 20, 20 seconds. So with that being said, I mean, we've got some things kind of pinpointed maybe here for open house and such. So again, I have not been through the building for a while. Mm -hmm. or we got wires hanging around and we got stuff to do yet. And yeah, there's, 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 there's things to do yet. I mean, not up front. I mean, the wiring, uh, I guess, is county's contractors, you know, as far as, you know, I definitely mm -hmm. don't want to have an open house with wires hanging from the ceiling. Or oh, that's not that's ceilings not. wide open or well, I can't keep the ceiling tiles in there, you know, half the time. But uh Bjorn and I are working on getting the STI is going to be in to do the fire final uh any wiring that's outstanding. So uh, I would say but if you want to hold it the ninth or tenth, that that would do that'd be appropriate. So if we're going training and all that the last week of July and you're getting your occupancy rating, and is it safe to say we could think about having switch over by the end of August? So like the first of September, we could be moved over. I, I would hope so. Yeah, I'm 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 getting to the point I don't want to hear hope so anymore. I no, I, I would for something that should have been open in February. You know. Yeah, uh, I'm saying that if you hold us ninth and tenth, you can move in the following week. Well, you guys talked about wanting your protocols and getting used to the new, all that kind of stuff. I'm assuming that training will be taking place as soon as you get the doors training and all that kind of stuff. You'll get your glitches worked out. So by the end of August, would we be moved in and fully functional? And to me, yes, if not sooner. You know, okay. sooner, we have it. sooner would be better. Yeah, I think we need to have the, so we need to get the, we get it, need to get it to where I occupy it, get it operational, have the training, then we got the fair week in there kind of messing with it. Once we get the training done, then we can have the uh, public open house. And after we have the public open house, then I think we should be ready to roll. Okay, so, and this may be a silly question, but do do we have like Delaware County, they're willing to come down and tweak and talk and help you a little bit? I mean, they're almost identical to us, is that correct? I spent a lot of time talking to Delaware yeah. County. I've been out there several times, see the way they operate, especially right now as I'm trying to finalize some policy procedure. I spent some time up there here, oh, maybe two weeks ago, a couple hours when I was up there for a transport, talking to them, seeing what they like, what they don't like procedurally, what they think work and does. Yeah. So I, I feel pretty comfortable that we should be able to operate yeah. well. No, I, I think it's, I mean, I don't want to be one of the, guinea pigs or nothing, you know. Well, it doesn't make sense to reinvent a wheel that's already been right. put out there, you know. And a lot of what we've done the last few years has been some trial and error to see what sure. will work and what won't. And I, I feel pretty confident that procedurally we're where we need to be for right now. We did have an idea of uh, people could pay to stay or pay to put somebody in the jail for a day and then if the person really didn't want to stay, they could bond out. A money little money raiser is that what can can we leave money raiser to pay for the jail? <laughs> what about what about naming rights for one of the rooms? You got <laughs> If you got a frequent flyer, you know. <laughs> really Let's not go there. <laughs> they used to do celebrity lockdown. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we've yeah. done that yeah. before. Yeah. Here. Say, that's that's been done. Yeah. I'm gonna put a minimum on my name. <laughs> 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 it's gonna cost me. Well, I think it's a good experience, Jim. <laughs> 
<laughs> but I'm breaking the pad, get, so. get the real feeling, you know. Yeah. We, we put yeah, them on, so, we can put them on the board. Huh? We put you on the board. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, we can figure out something like that, I think. And uh I mean it's gotta be a little fun involved here somehow, but but it's time to, that it's time to move forward here. Yeah, no, it's uh again I you get to the point where so I think if we can we kind of tentatively plan on ninth to tenth area for yep. a public open house if we see that we get ahead of that schedule. I don't think there'd be anything wrong with moving that up. Just well, the through. problem is if it goes out in the paper. Right, we don't like want it to go out yet. That that's when it is. But just, yeah, we got time for that yet, though. I mean, we got one, two, three, four. four I, I would say that. No, I think it should be in the paper. Yeah. <laughs> well, we got we got to get these contracts committed to a date, and I would say ninth and tenth. Is yeah, you do. <laughs> and. Uh, I would now, say if we set them, they're non negotiable. And there's no, well, we need a little bit more time. No, I agree with you 100%. <laughs> Do you have policies and procedures submitted to Delbert for? They're not submitted yet, but they're just about finalized. I, I would definitely get them submitted, even if he comes back, because I know he's on vacation in and out. So yeah. I would get them into him. And I have even if he comes with back with John and see. You know, he'll want to make and make change up, I'm sure. So yeah. no, I've been in contact with him on this. So okay. How are we doing for final invoicing and all that kind of stuff for the jail or is final invoicing? Uh, well it's just, I'm holding all the retainage and everything right now. Well, I just know because we're trying to we carried over from last year. We were hoping all this was gonna be paid out of last year's budget. Now we're crossing over. Do we have an idea about how much that is or uh, yeah, I'm sure we do. I mean, John and I do have an idea about what, how much is out there yet. Yeah. I mean, we're holding up 5% retainage on all the contractors right now. And I don't want to pay that out prior to, you know, no, no. you know, prior, that's the only sure. thing we got holding over them. Get the, you know, but all other the bills besides that 5% have been paid. That's, I think, kind of what Don's asking. Well, I think uh, we need to know if we got funds or not. Yeah, right. I mean, Bottom line is we got enough yeah. in the checkbook to pay the bills. I, you know, I mean, we don't want to squeeze that and either. And Shelly and Lisa and Matt. Uh, okay. I, I can, Shelly, there, there are, I mean, the contract invoices, you know, the contract amounts are set in the project. Yeah. So, I mean... They aren't changing. The only other change order we approved as a group was the add on, yeah. Was the vehicle salary part, which is now done. Four, yeah. And uh, so that's no, we something. should be coming down to the project to the point where we know where we're at. Final dollars being spent. Are we covered? Are we not covered? And you know, all of this is carried over from last year. So that's my question: Is mm -hmm. are we good? Do we have? Is there light at the end of the financial tunnel? Mm -hmm. You know. Well, we're looking at the we're in interest earnings in and stuff so we are tracking and we know exactly where we are as far as group uh for the project cost recap and we can go over that when i submit that yeah. and you know next week because we haven't we're... seen that project recapping in a while so no and, and we have, we have <laughs> <laughs> well <laughs> that gets their attention a little bit you know uh, so like uh, you say the contracts are contracts know exactly what it's going to cost you know exactly what we have left i mean we know what the interest was and we know yep so we're, we're putting that all in the project recap yep. track and such and, okay uh, the okay only thing we bought was the uh, unique enclosures and i don't know a lot of stuff that actually needs bought for the operational He'll use of the jail. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. You've been in contact with Lynn as far as that EOC and whatever he's purchased there. Yeah. yeah. Him and uh, Sergeant Bank have been working on that okay. uh, together. So yeah. So, Any other questions for John? John, I just, I just I talked to SGD, SGT before I came over and was not involved going too. So um, I asked him about the wiring over that east wall for the connectivity for the cameras in the interview rooms. So he's going to check on that. I want to make sure they're not confused that the one, the south monitor is the J monitor. I'm hoping because they thought it was there. And I'm like, well, we we're just checking with guys so we're not missing that. So, well, my understanding, what you said yesterday, 
And I got to get a whole ass GPS. He said, those my two monitors that you're talking about are for the interview. Yeah. Which were originally set to go someplace else. But that's just an HDMI cord coming over to hook into my understanding. So those aren't TVs. Those are just monitors. Yeah, they are just monitors, yeah. Okay. Yes. There's a lot of stuff over there that's been installed that I have no idea what the operation is. So, I mean, you got two separate. <laughs> All two right, separate let's figure it out, guys. <laughs> over there. And so there's lots of goddamn TVs and, and cameras and everything else over there. So there may be some costs associated with the EOC room. I mean, as far as touching and repairs and paint, but. Uh, yeah. Okay, any other questions for John? I reached out while we were talking here. I got told the west door still doesn't shut right behind you at TWB. And that the doors are still leaking for the two things I got told. Okay. They haven't contacted me. Gosh, that's what I got sent over from Amber. Okay, I'll stop over there. Appreciate it. No problem. Andrew, anything else? I think what Brent has in his action versus my which is not date, so I'm looking to go first on what you have. So you're, you're done with John, though. Thanks, Joe. I'm yeah. done with John. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thanks, John. Yeah, I'll need to get together with you too, with Adam and stuff. Yeah, we're going to come tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Thanks, John. Have a good holiday. Well, I understand you guys are short on time, so I'm going to try to fly through this pretty quick. I got a couple, I got about three topics I want to cover. The first is uh, last week we had a missing person out at Eden Valley Park uh, on the west end of the county. It started off as a Cedar County call. It involved us, Cedar County, Clinton County, um, Jones County. Um, the Iowa State Patrol, the Iowa Department of Natural Resources, Clinton County Conservation, uh, Clinton County Medical Examiner, the Coca Fire Department, and the Eastern Iowa Crisis. A couple of people got missed in the press release that Cedar County did because that's where it originated out of. So I want to make sure they get mentioned. Our EMA Lynn Meetinger was out there helping, and our Jackson County Conservation Department, uh, Nate Johnson and his people, they floated the creek to make sure the guy hadn't fallen off the bank into the creek. Uh, they helped out, they got missed in the press release. I reached out to the, uh, through my National Guard contacts, contacted the Joint Operations Off or Center out at Joint Force Headquarters, asked for some National Guard assets, uh, Lakota helicopters to fly the canopy because the guy had been missing since Tuesday morning. Um, Thursday night, we were out there until 1030 that night with the Iowa State Patrol plane. We could not pick up any heat or thermal images. So if he was there, my concern was is his body temperature had dropped to where they wouldn't pick it up anymore. So I reached out to the National Guard to see if we could fly a Lakota helicopter. You can't rid that area out there. It's too rough. The terrain is straight up rocks, bluffs, ravines. Anyway, uh, that we can fly the canopy of the wilderness and blow it around a little bit and have three, four people in the chopper watching. Plus, you also pick up the medevac assets also where they have the Stokes basket that they can lower down through the canopy for rescuing and if we found them in a ravine or off a bluff or something. So I want to mention the Iowa National Guard too. We also had live find and cadaver dogs. I uh, was arranging for them to come out because at that point, who knows. Um, I'd like to thank Kimberly Kyle from Quickstar. She, Thursday night, they sent out about six pizzas for us because we were all out there working late. Um, Quickstar's treated us really well. Uh, our own Jesse Gertz out of the county attorney's office, her and her husband brought out some drinks and snacks. It was very hot Thursday. Um, Friday, it rained all day. Um, once uh, Chief Deputy Crocker, uh, once we located the air assets from the guard never came because of the weather. We had to wait for a break in the weather. But in the meantime, Sergeant Brandon Beck was able to crack the code on the Google account to where that's how we located him because we could figure out where his cell phone actually died. Um, so it took us to that point. So we actually didn't need the guard assets anymore. So I want to brag a little bit about Sergeant Beck uh, being able to do that and having that skill set. But because him and uh, Chief Deputy Crocker were out there Thursday, it rained all day. Crocker was with the deceased subject at the point of the incident um, with a couple of family members, probably out in the rain for five hours. And Sergeant Beck was back at the staging area with the rest of the family and um, the crisis people and stuff. So 
just so you know, you're going to see a bill for two pizzas on the county credit card. You want two pizzas for those guys and uh, them because they couldn't. Obviously, you can't leave the scene when you're there. So, anyway, just want to cover that. Um, I will jump on to. So, in my budget last year, um, Andrew's got some bad news, but I guess I got good news. In my budget last year, uh, we turned in or we didn't utilize uh, approximately one hundred twenty-seven thousand dollars. So, I would ask that. Hang on to that because we're going to need that probably for the jail to cover some stuff in the jail, and we're already over our um, housing oh, out housing, yeah. costs for this year already. Um, so just ask that what we turned in, please keep that nearby because we could potentially need that going through this unknown year where we got to figure it out. So um, we don't ever dispose of funds that we. Well, I'm just saying, <laughs> keep it handy. Um, because we don't know what we're going into yet this year, and we're already uh, in the red with um, housing out costs for this year. The other thing I have is the uh, city contracts for uh, Baldwin and for Springbrook. This is where they're agreeing to pay some revenue into the county, the general fund, to help cover the law enforcement uh, uh, coverage of those two towns. Um, I don't know if you want me to get into this. How many do you got left to respond? Oh, what is this? This is probably up to what are we, four, maybe, Luann, I think we have done. I think so. So we probably have half, I'm guessing. Is the same rate as the other towns? No, they're all a different rate because it's per capita. It's like $25 per capita. Okay, but it's always a 25 per capita. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, I need a motion. Do we to need to make a motion? Well, yes, go ahead and approve that 28 agreement. Motion to approve the, approve the 28 agreements for Baldwin and, uh, and the Springbrook. I'll second it. I have a motion and a second to approve the 28 agreement and the chair's signature for the cities of Baldwin and Springbrook. A law enforcement agreement as presented. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. And before you step down, Brent, I just want to uh, send some kudos out to Chief Crocker for his assistance on the adventure race on Saturday. He showed up and kind of helped follow behind when we were setting up signs and stuff on Iron Bridge Road that didn't have any shoulder. He kind of helped provide some safety. And he also was on 62 during part of the bicycle run, and he worked where they were jogging, and he also set his squad car up on the bridge in Iron Bridge when a lot of the canoers and bikers were making their transition. So you had a large safety presence and we do appreciate it. Good. So That's make good. sure you pass that on. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, I reached out to the Chamber of Commerce uh, late Friday night and asked or wanted to know if they needed more personnel or anything and they felt they had it covered. So I guess I didn't come in because they felt they had it covered. And so and the gym was able to help out though while he was working his shift. So that's good. Good deal. So then what I have, um, just to keep the board apprised of some of this, June last month was historically, in I was about every way statistically, the busiest our jail has ever been. Um, we averaged over 20 inmates per day. Uh, we hit two records, highs of 28, two days in a row. Um, obviously, before the mezzanine, 28 would have been what we had in our jail. So we would have been shipping out of our new jail um, quite a bit this last month. Our current jail force being much smaller, we had a lot shipped out. Wait, um, but our new jail is 52. Initially have been 28, having not finished the mezzanine. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, so we would have been shipping at that point. <laughs> um, so I received a bill from Dubuque County for $8,340 for housing for June. Um, we'll also have bills coming in from Clinton and Delaware. At minimum, I would anticipate that'll get us up to a, at least $11,500. Uh, we have $10,000 budgeted for out of county housing for this fiscal year. So we will be probably $1,500 to $2,000 in the hole before we even hit July 1. So just want to keep you guys apprised of that. Um, our numbers currently are down to we have eight in and eight shipped out. So that's again, about $480 today we're spending on housing people out. So we are uh, going through one open as soon as possible. I agree, absolutely. Um, so very quickly, we're going through money there. Um, Nin had asked for a copy of what I was looking at in terms of jail supplies. 
um, of what we got, what we still need. So I can have a copy of that for each of you guys. Yeah. So on the note, when, uh, you know, as far as items, we need to go operational with the jail. Um, even though we still turned in $127,000 on our budget this last fiscal year, we did try to get as many supplies as we could get bought previously out of that budget. So I don't know that we have a whole lot left to. No, the last page is all that we really need to order. That was stuff we would have ordered, but it was not going to come in prior to July 1. So we did not uh, move forward on that since we have to have stuff in by July 1. Um, Otherwise, we have what we need to be fully functional um, with the full jail. So we're doing pretty well there. Is that Dubuque's? This is Dubuque's bill. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I, I will give kudos to Dubuque too, Joe Kennedy and uh, Mike Minster up there. They treat us very well as far as housing out in their jail. And I don't want to go into a lot of details, but they treat us real good. They do. They we need to course. probably remember that going forward if we can help them out back. So. Yeah, no, it's uh, again, you know, a budget is a budget. And last year when we had the budget, it was a lot of unknowns then. Uh, we didn't know when we were going to get started. We anticipated that we were going to get going by February or even a little earlier. So, again, it's not the fact that there's money left over per se, but we we will do what we need to do. I mean, as long as substantiating that. Yeah, you know that. The only other thing I also just wanted to obviously, as we have higher numbers, we have more medical costs. Um, we do have two of them right now that have had a little bit more medical costs, one that requires some advanced wound care and another one that had to have a, a biopsy for cancer. It was not cancerous, so we we're good there, but again, just costs that were. We had this conversation with Rachel back here. She's going to take it to Miller Makes and... Yeah, and I, my notes. Yeah, please do. And I ran that up my side of the flagpole. I agree with you. Yeah, so we, no, we need to keep pushing that a little bit, you know, I mean, that we've been talking about it for three, four years, but they seem to, I mean, they talk about it a little bit. They're talking about it more and more each year. It's yeah, and it's just, don't, it's just, it just doesn't make any through. sense that Medicare, they, they, they put the burden on us. It ain't our responsibility if they get incarcerated for something they did, you know. Right, it's not right to the taxpayers, but it's also not right to the inmate, because why would you lose your state aid when you go into jail? Let's say you have a mental health issue now. You now you come can out and you can't get your medication you need again, so then you're right back to square one again. So as much as we push mental health, it's crazy that we put people in that situation. So right. that makes more sense. I see well Hillcrest is gonna go back at it again. They got more personnel up there and um they're advertising they're starting up their program that they kind of put on hold for a while. Good, yeah. yeah. Right. Well, thank you very much. Well, I appreciate it, guys. Yeah, Dave, have a good uh safe and Enjoy for the holiday. Uneventful, yeah. yeah you too. Too. Thank you. Yeah, Thank have you. a good one. Um, I'll have to make a copy. I saw my audio. Okay. Okay. Thanks. So you can make one of ours. Oh, never mind. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. And is there anybody else on our agenda today? John Hanson Crocker, where that was Brent. Uh, we went through boards and commissions. Any other business before the board? Well, just throw a reminder out with the holiday coming up this weekend, everybody be safe and with the floodwaters along the Mississippi and stuff, just keep that in mind and be cautious if you're going to be anywhere near there. So um, otherwise, just have a great fourth. That's all be I got. Be safe, be smart. Yeah, enjoy your independence and 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 uh, feel good about it. But again, be like Don said, be safe and have a happy holiday. Thanks, Greg. Welcome to adjourn. Second. Have a motion and second to adjourn. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Meeting adjourned.